I remember saying to my editor, how many copies do you think will sell of this book? And um, she said, ah, oh, we've printed 18,000 and I think that'll go for a year at least. I went, wow. The book came out on a Friday morning. Monday morning, the publishers rang me up. Collins rang and said, we're reprinting. We've sold 18,000 copies in four days. So that just proved something to me that film tourism is important and Lord of the Rings was going to be good for New Zealand. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Viv, one of the co-founders of Set Jetters, And this month, our newsletter is focusing on New Zealand. Now, the reason for that is because early on in Set Jetters history, we built our MVP, our minimal viable product, focused on New Zealand because New Zealand really is the gold standard for film tourism. So of course, you can't talk about film and New Zealand without talking to Ian Brody, the author of the Lord of the Rings Location Guidebook. Ian, welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, I understand film and New Zealand are kind of somewhat interesting to you. <laughs> Lovely to be here, Viv, and you're quite right. The first thing I've got to admit is I'm a Lord of the Rings fan, and I first read yeah. Lord of the Rings way back in 1972. Reading the book immediately, the landscape of New Zealand that I was looking at was becoming Middle Earth. I'd read the book 40 odd times, and then I found out that this um, New Zealand director, Peter Jackson, was going to make a film based on Lord of the Rings. It was going to be shot in New Zealand. And I thought, well, who? At long last, New Zealand actually is going to become Middle Earth. The first film came out, went to the movies, watched it and went, oh, look at all these amazing places. I wonder if other people would feel the same as what I do. So I published a few books um, on aviation, went to uh, my publishers and they said, well, this is a bit tricky. It's HarperCollins and there's a whole lot of rights involved. Go and talk to HarperCollins. So I sent off a letter and thought, yeah, well, that's the end of that. And about six weeks later, the letter arrives, the email that says, hey, we think this is actually quite a good idea for a little book to be sold in New Zealand. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and that was to encompass the locations both for the real fan who wants to sit under the tree that Frodo and Sam sat under. But I also wanted to encourage those that had not read the books, but had seen the film once and just loved the scenery to learn a little bit more about Lord of the Rings to learn and visit the locations and discover these places that were off the beaten track. Because it was an official book, I had the help of everybody. And um, the next minute, Barry Osborne, the producer, walks in and he starts talking to me and he got it as well. They'd spent all this time in New Zealand. They loved the place, they loved the people. What a great idea for a book. So then I put the family in the car and we literally traveled to all the locations of Lord of the Rings. It was just unbelievable going to some of these places. I'm a great traveler in New Zealand. I knew so many places, but I hadn't been to the likes of Paulburn, um, which became Rohan. So I was introduced as well to all these uh, different locations. At the same time, I stayed in the hotels that the cast and crew stayed in. And that's been picked up on. If you go to the Powderhorn at uh, Oakuni, you can stay in the Orlando Bloom Room now. Things like that, which is cool. You touched on some interesting points there. Um, one of which was, you know, being very familiar with an area, yet through film discovering new areas. You talked about um, the area of the Rohim. So tell me a little bit then, Ian, about the power of film tourism. I guess, pun intended, put a new lens on a place. In England, for example, one in four people in England travel overseas to a location that they've seen either on a film or in a television series. So it has the power to draw and that's the difference. You might say, yeah, I need to go to Queenstown because I've seen the travel brochures and it looks cool. And it is cool. Of course, I want to go there. But when you watch a film, you're embedded into this other place and none more so than uh, Lord of the Rings, it impacts on your heart. There's an emotion there that makes you feel if it's a good film, a good television series, it takes over your soul as you watch that program. So when you go to a film location, all of a sudden, you're not just 
looking at that place in the brochure, you're actually reliving that moment that you felt when you first saw that film. You've actually got another dimension of looking at a place. You've uh, hit the nail on the head there, Ian, and it's something that we've learnt. You don't have to fall in love with set jetters. You have already fallen in love with your favourite film. The film has done all of the hard work. You're right, it's that emotional pull that that the films give us. So Ian, one of the other things that we like to do as set jetters, uh, because sometimes I put my business hat on and, and people often look at us and go, oh, film tourism, is it really a thing? Show us the money. So Ian, tell us um, about the financials behind film tourism. Is it really a thing? Is it financially viable? First thing I'd say it's an untapped market because a lot of um, tourism organisations around the world actually haven't started to run with film tourism yet. But let's take Lord of the Rings as the big example, as you see it in New Zealand. I did a number of calculations a few years ago with Tourism New Zealand, and we did the bare case minimum of what Lord of the Rings, not The Hobbit, but Lord of the Rings did for New Zealand. And the figures that rolled around our tongues was 135 million New Zealand dollars per annum. Yeah, wow. It's huge. And it's not just Lord of the Rings, because there's fans out there of every possible film and series that you can name, those people are going to places in New Zealand because of that as well. It, the numbers might not be so big, but there is always numbers there. And that film or series is saying, hey, you loved me, come to my place. Yep. And you'll spend money. And of course you'll spend money because it's a location that you will go to but then you'll go and have a coffee, you'll go and have a wine and, and soak up the atmosphere. You'll stay the night because you went to that place. So every single piece of landscape or product in film tourism is going to create money. Well, look Ian, um, that's been a fantastic chat and we're really uh, grateful for having you um, once again on the Set Jetters platform. Don't forget to follow Ian Brody on Instagram. And of course, don't forget to download Set Jetters you can do that on the Apple and Android store. Thanks, folks.